My name is Allison Gregory, and I'm a co-author on our recently released paper entitled Consensus Clinical Management Guideline for Beta Propeller Protein-Associated Neurodegeneration, or what I will call BPAN moving forward, published in Developmental Medicine and Child Neurology. This guideline was developed in a collaborative manner, leveraging the expertise of specialists from several different institutions, as well as three parents of young and adult children with BPAN. BPAN is the only X-linked dominant form of neurodegeneration with brain iron accumulation, or MBIA for short. In 2012, the causative gene was identified as WDR45. Over the following several years, particularly as exome sequencing became more widely available, it became obvious that BPAN was more common than initially suspected. The prevalence is estimated at about two to three per million, meaning it is still ultra rare. The clinical phenotype has also continued to expand as more cases are identified. As practitioners working with NBIA disorders and involved in related advocacy groups, we felt it was imperative to provide recommendations for best practice in caring for individuals with BPAN. Our hope is that it will serve as a key resource for patients, their families, and their medical teams. This review is a result of a comprehensive evaluation of the literature and consensus of clinicians with experience treating individuals with BPAN. Details can be found in the methods section of the paper. The section on diagnosis and initial assessment and care covers presenting features, the phenotypic spectrum, diagnostic imaging, genetic testing and counseling, and disease progression. While the information cannot all be covered in a short podcast, we do want to highlight a few key points. First, the phenotypic spectrum is now known to include children who may initially only have developmental delay and predominant speech deficits. Some may have intractable epilepsy, while others may have autistic or RET-like features. Genetic testing and counseling in BPAN are complicated by several factors. The phenotype is influenced by whether a somatic or inherited mutation was present, the pattern of X inactivation in females, and the mutation itself. Most individuals with BPAN are females, and most have de novo mutations, but there are affected males in cases of inherited mutations as well. Imaging findings are described, including how they evolve from childhood to adolescence to adulthood. Given that the presenting features can be as broad as developmental delay or seizures, imaging is an extremely useful tool to point towards BPAN early in the diagnostic odyssey. A halo of T1 hyperintense signal around a hypo-intense signal band in the cerebral peduncles is pathognomonic for BPAN. The second half of the paper focuses on evaluation, management, and surveillance. Major impacts on the quality of life for children and adults with BPAN include seizures, behavior problems, communication deficits, sleep disorders, and eventual neurological regression. Since there are currently no disease-modifying treatments, care is supportive and a multidisciplinary approach is important. Similar to Rett syndrome, individuals with BPAN can have a complex epilepsy which is refractory to treatment. While management may be challenging, seizures usually do cease in adolescence, at which time anti-seizure medication should be tapered. The final evolution of BPAN is a period of neurodegeneration characterized by Parkinsonism, often with dystonia, developing in adolescence, but more often in adulthood. The movement disorder is accompanied by cognitive deterioration, both of which can be a new source of anxiety and grief for family and caregivers. Palliative care can be a key resource during this time to support focus on quality of life and help with decisions around end-of-life care. A growing number of advocacy groups are also a rich source of support for many families, including the NBIA Alliance, an international federation of family advocacy organizations. We hope you can access our full article and use it as a resource to help diagnose and care for individuals with BPAN. Thank you.